everyone. A very warm welcome to your own Silicon Valley Tech Talks channel. This is your host Faisal Bhattu from San Jose, California. Have you ever imagined life without internet? Sounds scary, right? So internet works based on this science called computer networking or sometimes simply networking which basically defines all the rules and mechanisms on how computer and nodes talk to each other to make the internet work. No computer networking, no internet. As simple as that. In this show, we'll be talking to a computer networking visionary, Amir Khan, who is the CEO and founder of Alkira Incorporated. Alkira is solving for networking challenges in cloud services, and as many of you might know, cloud services have been a big thing since 2015 or so. The building right behind me is Alkira's headquarter in San Jose, California. Alkira is funded by venture capital firms like Sequoia Capital and Kleiner Perkins. Alkira is considered as very successful startups in Silicon Valley today as it is going through its growth and scale stage. Before founding Alkira, Amir had done another startup called Viptela which created products in software defined wide area network SD-WAN again related to computer networking and that company was acquired by Cisco. Prior to Viptela, Ahmed held senior leadership roles in big corporations like Cisco, Nortel and Juniper. So without any further delay, let's talk to Ahmed and learn from his experiences and technologies he's been building. Hello Ahmed. Hi. Welcome to our show. Pleasure to have you. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on the show. Great, great. Uh, so, Amir, uh, you held uh, senior leadership level roles in big corporations. And uh, we understand that as one goes uh, up the leadership ladder in big corporations, mm -hmm. it becomes harder to leave that work style and join startup ecosystem. But you have done that. Mm -hmm. So, my questions are, what motivated you to do that? And second... Uh, do you have any advice for all those people in big corporations who think about joining startup ecosystem or starting a company? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, when you uh, join a big company, you climb the ladder. Over time, you become very comfortable and your expenses and responsibilities grow over time. Uh, so it becomes more and more difficult to leave those jobs and do a startup. So my recommendation is that you save enough if you're in that situation so that uh, you can um, have money for at least two years uh, because it's going to take uh, some time to get the funding going if you're doing it for the first time. Uh, so that's very important for you to consider. And again, everybody had, knows their own circumstances, so they should uh, plan accordingly. So uh, let's talk a bit about Alkira and its products. Uh, we understand that Alkira is solving for the networking challenges in the cloud and uh, the product is basically network as a service. Uh, my question is that internet, if you see, it really ramped up in 1990s mm -hmm. and well before cloud services started to accelerate around 2015, internet had already uh, reached to a stable or more mature stage. Mm -hmm. So why did we start seeing challenges with networking in cloud? Why couldn't we just leverage what we had achieved before? Mm -hmm. And why did we have to sort of start over? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, if you think about how enterprises operated in the IT world, they have the data centers and they had branches. Uh, and some people used to work from remote uh, sites or home etc. So interconnecting all of this used to be over physical infrastructure primarily and the services were provided from the data center out to all the employees whether they were sitting in the branches or offices or, uh, or home. As we move to the cloud, uh, the clouds are a multi-tenant environment meaning that multiple companies can use them at the same time. So they had to build the infrastructure in a way where compute was readily available. You could just literally go to the cloud and rent out servers or storage or uh, even serverless capabilities or applications. Uh, but that was done primarily 
to offer those types of services. But let's say now you have to integrate that into your existing on-premise infrastructure. It became quite tedious for people to just extend that and have that common capability across all these environments. Because within the clouds, you had to build an environment with a piecemeal approach mm -hmm. by taking virtual appliances from many different companies mm -hmm. uh, to build the network and security and other types of uh, capabilities. So it became a very manual process mm -hmm. in a very automated environment. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our customers started calling it a spaghetti mess because they grew <laughs> over time yeah. and they, they you know, uh, had a pretty large infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, and even if you have a smaller infrastructure, uh, still it requires a lot of knowledge because every cloud is done differently. There's no standardization across clouds. So that's where the challenge was that it was, you know, uh, point products. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the environments were diff uh, different in all clouds. And uh, people had to utilize different types of technologies in each cloud or each environment uh, to mm -hmm. secure the environment and mm -hmm. offer different types of services. So that was, yeah. that was a big challenge for the enterprises. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the proposition from Alkira is multi-cloud mm -hmm. with all we just explained about challenges of cloud and networking. Yeah. I think it does make sense for customers to have just one cloud vendor and deal with these challenges because if they have multiple cloud vendors, challenges will just increase. So why would customers even consider multi-cloud? multi, multi -cloud? Uh, What are the typical use cases? Yeah, it's, an, it's a very important question. Um, the reason that enterprises go into multiple clouds is, uh, you know, they may go through an acquisition mm -hmm. or they may have the need to reduce the cost and certain things like data storage mm -hmm. could be less expensive in another cloud. Uh, or there are certain applications which are more optimized to run in a particular cloud. Uh, in other use cases that you may be interacting mm. with partners yeah. who may be sitting in a different cloud. So when you consider the overall IT environment, it becomes important for customers to have the ability to freely move between clouds. And that's becoming more and more normal now. Mm. Uh, as people are starting to go more into the cloud, they're starting to realize how important it is to have a common solution which spans across multiple clouds. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that, that's helpful. Let's uh, discuss the stock of the town, uh, generative AI or AI in general. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you think AI will impact the work you are doing in networking and cloud? Yeah, so AI is still uh, early. Mm -hmm. It's growing very fast. I mean, if you look uh, um, three years back, we didn't have any idea that we would be at this stage mm -hmm. uh, as, you know, the introduction of ChatGPT a few months back just accelerated things. And we've seen it grow from, you know, very, from its very infancy type situation or uh, infancy, you, you can call it infancy, right? <laughs> and now it's a growing kid, which is learning more and more. But it's learning very fast because the brain is distributed and you know, resides in uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands, or millions of computers across many, many different environments. That's how we are making it learn. So it's it's mm -hmm. it's becoming more and more intelligent. But the reality is that uh, we have to look at how it applies to practical environments. Or uh, in our case, as an example, networking is very complicated mm -hmm. and very uh, you ha you have to have a very predictable environment. Because if your network is down, it's very mission critical. All your applications go down. So can we have uh, applicability of AI in the mainstream solution? Mm -hmm. Or can we, ha you know, look at adjacent areas where it could be very helpful? Mm -hmm. So augment the capabilities that we mm -hmm. provide in our networking solution with uh, with, with, with uh, artificial intelligence. So initially, I think what we need to do is uh, provide more of analysis capabilities or educational capabilities or support capabilities mm -hmm. uh, by using these types of technologies and then slowly bring it into the mainstream to be able to make decisions. Because let's say if you mm -hmm. let AI make a decision and it uh, makes a mistake, 
then how you tr how do you troubleshoot mm -hmm. yeah. that environment? Mm -hmm. Your environment is down, then uh, you're losing tens or hundreds of millions of dollars an hour as an enterprise. Yeah. Do you really want to rely on that kind of a system? So I think we are at the early stages. Over time, we will improve mm -hmm. uh, and we will learn. Uh, but it's going to be an important part of part of our overall strategy uh, going forward to integrate AI into the solutions that we are providing. Startups are in general high risk, high reward proposition. Mm -hmm. We've heard that over 90% of startups actually fail. Mm -hmm. But you have done two successful startups back to back. Is there any secret sauce or cookie cutter you would like to share with other founders? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, it boils down to knowledge, yeah. right? Uh, the more knowledge you have, the chances of rec uh, success become higher. Um, you have to come up with an idea which is strong and uh, which is going to solve a major problem and which is going after a big market, right? The potential to build a significant sized company uh, needs to be there. That's what the venture capitalists will look for. That's what the investors will look for. And then on top of that, you need to have a team which is capable of executing. And then you ha need to have an experience or understanding. You may not have the experience, but your willing willingness to learn about how the companies are run. So as an example, you may think if I build a solution with the engineering team, it may, not, it may be enough. Mm -hmm. But that's not the reality. You have to deploy it in an existing environment. How do you integrate it with the existing environment? Uh, so there may be challenges related to that. There may be challenges related to supporting the products. Uh, there may be challenges related to scaling the pro uh, product. So you have to have a multidimensional approach to building companies. And uh, only well-rounded companies succeed. Uh, you cannot have focus on just one area when you're building these companies. It's a ecosystem that you have to build to achieve that level of success that you're looking for. Uh, I mean, we try to keep a specific segment in our show for mm -hmm. just for students. Mm -hmm. So are there any research areas or open problems to be solved, which mm -hmm. you can recommend students to research on, do their projects on? Well, there are so many different areas and uh, no matter which technology you pick up, uh, if you have the knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, try to figure out where the you know the, where the technology or solution lacks uh, like when we started uh, looking into the cloud uh, because of our knowledge uh, we were able to figure out where the flaws were and where the problems were basically you have to uh, determine a problem which focuses on solving something major uh, mm. for the customers and that it'll become a need for the customer rather than just a nice to have thing right yeah. so so my recommendation to the students is have command over whichever topic mm -hmm. you're going after or whichever mm -hmm. area you're going to focus on. Uh, you need to have inside-out inside knowledge and then try to determine how you can improve things significantly, whether it's Tesla mm -hmm. for cars mm -hmm. or you know, Alkira for networking or there are many companies who mm -hmm. come up with you know even new ideas mm -hmm. like OpenAI. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so always be on the look for something which is going to be solving a problem for the consumer or the enterprises. Thank you very much, Amir, for coming to our Thank show. You. It's I'm sure it will be really helpful to our audience. Thanks I again. certainly hope so. Thank you so much for having me.